Welcome to the Healers Cafe, conversations on health and healing with Dr. Mano. So welcome to the Healers Cafe. And today I have with me Danielle Zanaich, and she is a homeopath um, with an extensive education. Now she's a registered member of the Royal Society of Homeopaths. So it's a U- UKRS Home is the, um, the, the degree that you get at, at the end of that. And um, well, we're going to talk about homeopathy, uh, one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> so first of all, um, welcome uh, to this podcast and maybe tell us a little bit how you um, how you found homeopathy and how did or how did it find you or how, a little bit of your history. Thanks so much for the introduction, Manon, and I'm happy to be here today. Um, I found homeopathy about 28 years ago, so it's been a long ride with this medicine, wonderful medicine. I found it actually through my dog. Um, She uh, received a parvo vaccination, and after the vaccination, she developed a huge tumor on her eye. And uh, the conventional vet, veterinary uh, medicine wanted to cut the tumor off because it was obstructing her vision. It was making her blink, making her eye water. There was, um, you know, swelling. She was pawing at it. It was very irritated. And she was going to need stitches from that and eye drops for perhaps the rest of her life with that surgery. So I said, let me see what I can do first holistically. And I went into a local pet food store and found a a card for a holistic homeopathic vet. Um, His name was Dr. Roberto Gill. He's originally from Mexico at the time. I think he was practicing on a horse farm in New Jersey. So I took my dog to go see him. And I said, can you please help us here? I really don't want to do this surgery she has this tumor, um, and he gave her a remedy called Thuya, which is a remedy that is made from a pine tree. They're very tall, skinny pine trees that are often um, planted between homes for privacy. I'm sure you've all seen them. Yeah. And Thuya has a doctrine of signatures in that it grows um, big, massive tumors on the trunk of the tree. Um, which often look like warts or tumors. And it's a, also a big wart remedy. So he gave us this remedy to administer um, to our dog, which was very easy. She ate the sugar pellets right out of my hand. Um, I think we gave two doses every day. And within a week, the tumor was completely gone, completely dissolved from the eye. Um, no cutting, no stitches, um, no medication, no eye drops. And I brought her back to the conventional vet. I showed him, couldn't believe it. Um, from that moment on, I then switched to a holistic vet and I was blown away by this medicine. And I said, what is this? Can, can you refer me to a homeopath, um, for people? And he did. He referred me to my uh, homeopath of 28 years. Her name is Sue Anello. She practices in London. Um, She's treated my whole family. And she pushed me to become a homeopath. She said, you have a real knack for this. Mm -hmm. Um, Loved the way she taught remedies. And I eventually went to the school center for homeopathic education, where she was one of the professors Um, and got my degree, my four-year degree. And then this past year, I went back to the same school to get my um, Bachelor of Science Honors degree in homeopathy. I did an Mm add-on degree. Cool. Wow. (laughs) That's dedicated. But um, once you see it work, right, it's very hard to, um, you know, to ignore, you know, and, and 
I know that in the UK, I forget which uh, journal, medical journal, they they did this. Um, it's it's like a so called research, but it it brought homeopathy down. It said, oh, it's it's a it's no better than placebo, and it doesn't work. And uh, do you know which study I'm talking about? I I've forgotten the name. Um, maybe the JAMA. Jam. It was JAMA. Correct. Yes. Yes, um, you have that, you know, that study. <laughs> well, this whole last year was all based upon studies and scientific evidence and research of, um, you know, proven studies and studies that were obscured or hidden right. or um, sort of, you know, changed, if you will. Played with. So, <laughs> very with with that study and also what the AMA in America has done to suppress homeopathy and to um you know say untrue things that it's placebo effect and that it doesn't work and you know they say these things to hold us down but we keep <laughs> Uh, it's funny because I, I, you know, I raised uh, all my all my uh, children on homeopathy, you know, because once you know it works, I mean, you're going to you're going to be using it as your primary uh, option. And and it's very interesting until this so-called yeah, so-called pandemic, you know, where now all this fraud is being exposed and you know, people now realize, ooh, I don't know if I would trust that journal. Oh, they published this and they didn't verify this. And, oh, there's this and there's that conflict of interest. Like, you know, they were all saying, well, you know, you know, mom, I know it's 30 years of practice, but the evidence is not there. And I'm like, okay, you know what, people <laughs> just sit in my shoes and see what I see. And I'll tell you the evidence is is there and um you know maybe the research and i'm not a researcher so i you know i i'm i'm not adept at picking up where they've you know how they've falsified or what they've done wrong i mean mm. some it's obvious you know you give the same remedy to everyone for a name condition well it's not going to work that way because it's individualized medicine <laughs> so you know it, it's not going to have those kind of you know it's not one for all you know <laughs> So, um, yeah, very but, yeah, I hope homeopathy makes it through um, this current time because at least in Canada, they they think they're going to remove eighty percent of all our supplements. Mm. Put it under the same rigor that they do these um, apparent bioweapons. You know, it's like no, there's no rigor there, and that's been well established now. So it's kind of like, what kind of rigor story are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's very scary. You know, I am near the first outbreak area in New York. Uh, it was New Rochelle, and right. I'm in what county, uh, not far from there. So I got all of the um, patients that were rejected from hospitals and because there was no conventional medicine in the beginning of COVID. And uh, these patients were really suffering, gasping for air. Um, we're talking about Delta early on. And we've had these medicines since the early 1800s, you know, uh, medicines that are completely safe to use, made from plants and minerals, a lot of, um, you know, remedies like carbo veg, for example, which is made from charcoal we were using for, for breathlessness and trouble breathing, uh, Brionia for the dry cough. Um, for for the more wet cough, Antimonium Tartaricum. We have all these pneumonia cough remedies that are so old, you know, that, that we know can work with um, breathlessness and, and these different kinds of coughs because it was exhibiting a little different in everyone. Um, some of it even looked like altitude sickness and we were using some of those remedies. So, um, I got a lot of the turnaways from from the hospitals and 
made a lot of new um, homeopath fans, you know, that might not have normally tried homeopath, but were really desperate for medicine for relief of these symptoms. And I think I do think the um, points of view are changing and people are standing up to the governments and saying, look, we need alternative medicines because some of the conventional medicines that they're using now we're seeing are causing rebound effect, right? Or longer, a longer course of virus. So the person could have been done within, you know, five to 10 days. And now it's taking two weeks to get over this virus or long COVID. Like resident Madeira and some that haven't even been proven to be effective in the first place. <laughs> yes. And that drug was actually found very, very hard on the kidney and liver. And um, many doctors stopped using it. Um, and many of the other medications that did work were also suppressed because there was no money to be made by prescribing those old drugs that are do not have a patent on them. Yeah. Well, it's it's kind of it's it's clear and getting clearer and clearer what the what is actually happening and. And so when you um, offer to speak a bit on homeopathy, I thought this is so perfect because more than ever, people need to look at other things that work that um, that are, you know, fairly simple. I mean, I don't want to oversimplify it because <laughs> studying 13 years to get really good at homeopathy wasn't simple, <laughs> but you know, for most of the, the the basic stuff, it's it's very easy to to get results. And you know, the more the more complicated a, a case is, and the more you need to know about pathology and understanding all that. Well, that's not for the average. Just pick up a remedy. But you know, like you were saying, for you know, colds and coughs and earaches and teething and all of these things and even after side effects of of um you know vaccination which we call vaccinosis you know that's actually a rubric as you know mm -hmm. um there are key remedies that are have seen to help expel the the toxin that is coming from and that's the reaction of the body to the toxin right because you know, and now more than ever. And, you know, so it makes so much sense that, you know, when you, I think about your dog, <laughs> like it's, yeah, it's, um, it's a godsend to have these things. Available. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do believe there is a time and a place for medicine as well. And we can work alongside with doctors and conventional medicine, um, and we often do, you know, we often do work with people that are on a lot of medications. Um, and I often encourage my clients to look at the side effects of these drugs because they come to me and they'll, they'll tell me, you know, their whole list of symptoms. And I'll say, well, did you have this before taking the medication? And oftentimes it's, no, I just developed this and this is odd for me. I don't normally have um, these types of symptoms. So, you know, doing your own research around that is really important too. working with your doctor, bringing things to their attention. Um, and often sometimes people see specialists. I see this a lot. So they have three doctors involved and the three doctors are not communicating with one another. And even though the drugs are listed on their chart, there can be um, interactions, you know, um, or side effects from now new symptoms, side effects from a combination of all three of those drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. So I, I'm thinking there's five people listening to us that now are intrigued, but they don't know what it is. <laughs> Do you want to sort of explain what how the principle of how it works you know and yeah the the the, the easy version of it otherwise we could be here for hours trying to explain it. what would your life be like if you were pain-free 
If you are one of the millions who suffer from chronic pain, the thought of just one day without it may seem impossible. This is often because conventional medicine tends to fall short in the treatment of pain. Opting to prescribe pills or recommend surgery rather than getting to the root cause of the problem. But if you are suffering with emotional or physical pain, there is hope. Join the founder and CEO of Bowen College, Manon Boliger, live online for your Body Mind Reboot. Learn how to listen to your symptoms and get to the root cause of your pain. Plus, be trained in basic Bowen therapy moves so that you can reboot your body for optimal health. You don't have to live in pain. You can heal. Stop the pain pill cycle by visiting www.yourbodymindreboot.com to learn more and to register. Yeah, I'll try to simplify it. So homeopathy is energy medicine. Um, and we take a substance and we put it through a process of dilution, trituration, and succussion. So many times that is just an energetic imprint of that substance. So it's very different from herbal medicine, which is the crude form of the substance. So you actually ingest the plant. Um, and this process is what allows us to use Oops, sorry, I'm getting a call. Sorry about that. Um, this process is what allows us to use many different substances. Um, and the person will take this substance, which has been put onto little sugar pellets or SACLAC, and often under the tongue, like 15 minutes away from food or drink, and what happens when the substance is taken in the mouth is that the body, it's, a, it's curing like with like, right? Similar substance to, um, to the suffering. So curing like with like. And then what happens is it triggers an immune response or it strikes up, I like to say this, it strikes up the vital force or the prana or chi, some people call it this energy center that lives inside of us, right? The remedy fires that up and gets the body actually and the mind and spirit to heal itself. Mm -hmm. So the homeopathy is just a little stimulus, if you will, to help, um, to help you heal yourself. Um, and I like to use the example of uh, um, poison ivy. I use this as example. We have a remedy called Rustox. Um, and Rustox is great for skin rashes, uh, arthritis, inflammation, um, really itchy uh, allergic reactions sometimes we use it for, eczema. There's a lot of things we use um, this remedy for restlessness of the mind, restlessness of the body. And so what is that? Um, that's the picture of the person. And it's also the picture that you would see when a person has touched poison ivy or has a poison ivy rash, right? They're very itchy, red, irritated, restless can have swollen joints. So again, this is curing like with like. So we give back the substance that exhibits the same symptoms to the body, the body recognizes it, and the symptoms then go away. So that notion, because, you know, uh, I, I know in my practice, we would say, why would you give the same energetically as what the person has like what's the idea behind that do you want to expand yeah so the idea is that the body or mind can become stuck right for whatever reason it could be low immunity it could be trauma stress grief um it could be a sickness an illness um viral bacterial and then 
the vital force becomes stuck. There's no movement. There's stagnation of energy. So we need to help facilitate that to, to move out of the body. So it's really about firing up that energy center and helping trigger an immune response or some movement to the case. And because of the body's innate ability to heal and intelligence, um, once you give that little stimulus, it responds in such an intelligent way and just knows what to do. Mm. But but from the perspective of I like I totally agree with you, it's a trigger. It, it's it starts a process. But how what's the idea of giving some of the same that like, I mean, there's Par Paracelsus, you know, who was a philosopher in the fifth century, who noticed that the law he created, he said it's a law that like cures like. You know, mm. I know that Hahnemann, in his discoveries of um, malaria, for example, you know, he, well, he was working with quinine, right? As you, as you yep. know, um, and he noticed that there was in intermittent fevers. And they had certain hours for thirst, certain hours for the fever, for the sweat, for, you know, the chill, et cetera, which is all in the repertories. And so he found like that malaria has kind of the same thing. So that came the idea, oh, let's see if we can find the symptoms of malaria uh, that somebody actually has a patient and match it with the and and it's not just peruvian bark that's quinine it's not just that there's many different remedies but the remedy that had the chills at the same time the fever at the same time the etc and what he found is if he found the match then what paracelsius said became true like cures like and that's kind of like my my understanding of how that came you know to be um do, do you have more on that or from the history or or another way of understanding why we're not just giving like in 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 um in botanical medicine we wouldn't give the same we would not give a child with a who's screaming and whatever with a earache and you know wants to be carried and put down in homeopathy would give them chamomile as a remedy, right? But in botanics, um, when you give chamomile, chamomile tea, it's known for resting and relaxing and, you know, all of that, right? So, you know, most of our culture thinks, oh, we need to do the things to soothe. And then you'd think allopathic medicine you know, does the things to band-aid, like they're never going to get to the cure. They're just covering most of the symptoms, right? And I'm not ditching that there are things mm -hmm. that I'm just saying, as a philosophy and principle, um, they'll patch up. And m most of, I'm not saying botanicals does that, but there's the tendency to to work in the same mindset that you're soothing or you're decreasing inflammation, you're the one doing the thing rather than triggering, like you said, the body to have a response. And and it's like, why is more of the same going to do that? <laughs> do you have a do you have yeah. another? <laughs> well because we need a stimulus sometimes, you know, I like to use the analogy of getting stuck. I think that Hahnemann also found, you know, the way homeopathic proving, provings are done is taking a group of healthy individuals and giving them a substance that they don't need because they don't have any symptoms. They don't have mental, emotional symptoms. They don't have physical symptoms over and over and over again, right? You give the substance and this is how we get our books, our materia medicas and our homeopathic repertories. Um, and then they record amongst all of these healthy individuals, a common theme 
of the remedy. So all of these people took the same substance. They all developed um, a dry cough and a headache, for example. So now this goes into, into our books. Um, and we can see that this remedy can, you know, when proven, can give this, these symptoms, right? So now the individual that's sick, somebody outside of this study mm -hmm. or um, will that has a cough and um, headache, a dry cough and a headache will now need this remedy, Bryonia, for example, which is a plant remedy. So, and then an example of Hahnemann with chinchona bark, he actually did these experiments on his uh, poor family uh, <laughs> that did not have malaria, right? And and they took this substance and it made them very sick. He almost he almost killed his family, from what I understand. <laughs> and and I hate to laugh, but um, you know he was very experimental in that way. Um, and we can see with this remedy, China, which was another big remedy that we used during COVID, and we use it a lot post-viral um, China for dehydration, loss of fluids. Um, we can use it for malaise, which often, you know, looks like malaria. Sometimes they use that remedy with Lyme disease when there's, you know, symptoms of, of malaise, brain fog. Uh, and we learned this because at that time he was using the crude form of the substance. This was before he knew he had to dilute, triturate, and succuss the substance, right? right. So that's an example of not, of herbal medicine and why you can't give certain yeah. poisons herbal medicines to to a healthy individual but again back to the the stimulus right we know this from the provings we know that the body will recognize the similar remedy to help facilitate and to help unstick um the case and we all get stuck you know we all can get stuck um even the healthiest individuals should be getting sick a couple times a year. And that also shows us that um, the immune system is working when, you know, when stressed or when exposed to certain things, chemicals or um, medicines, you know, or whatever it may be, trauma, grief. Yeah, but it knows how to, how to react. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to tell my, my patients, it's like, you've got X, Y, Z has symptoms, you know, and I'm going to give you an, an energetic X, Y, Z that's going to irritate your body and shake you up so that your own vital force will want to get rid of that because that's the external thing. And in doing that, it'll now improve all the symptoms that you have because in a sense, it's gotten unstuck. It's got a reason to fight, yeah. you know? Because if you give the wrong remedy, nothing happens. Like if you just, as, I don't mean like if you do it as a herb different, but if you're, you give the wrong one and the body goes, well, whatever, what do you have to do with me? Nothing. So I'm not going to respond, right? You know, so. Um, I yeah. love, yeah. I like that the analogy that's that's really good yeah and the body is intelligent it knows what to do yes yeah uh, you know what we've talked half an hour can you believe it <laughs> it's like that was for me off the beat <laughs> oh anyway um may, i'll leave you maybe the the last uh, words on it um other than I want to, I just want to say that people who have not discovered homeopathy, go find it. If you can't find it on Google, <laughs> then look on DuckDuckGo or, you know, look elsewhere because um, it is clear that we're not having access to all the things that really help us and things that um, don't make immediate money for certain corporations we're gonna see less and less unless we say no 
and put her foot down and actually take our health into our hands. So I'll end with that. I'll give you the last word. <laughs> Thank you so much, Manon. I completely agree. You know, and I think that this is a very safe, effective alternative mm -hmm. medicine that people can try, you know, and it's very user friendly. It's very easy. You can you can find advice. You know, you can ask a homeopath even, look, I found this remedy, how do I use it? And we're happy to help you. Um, you just follow the directions on the bottle, you know, according to the pharmacy, every pharmacy is different. Sometimes it's one pellet, sometimes it's five pellets. And, um, and the law of minimum dose is important. You just wanna take just a little bit to stimulate the immune system. And it, that may be all you need, or you may need a few more doses. In a chronic case, you may need to keep redosing, right? So I would encourage everybody to find this medicine from your local health food store, um, find a local homeopath to work with, and, um, and try it. It's very safe and effective. It's great for um, babies, pregnant moms, all the way through the elderly. There's really no issue that it cannot help. Um, and like I said earlier, it can even help with side effects of, of medication. So I would encourage everybody to try it. It's awesome. I, I can't say enough good stuff about homeopathy. I've devoted my whole life to it. I've been in private practice for 10 years. Um, I feel so blessed to have helped a lot of people with this wonderful medicine. And I continue to study it as we um, learn more remedies and more about homeopathy and its research and scientific evidence. And um, I just, I love it. You know, I'm so happy to have found, to have found it through my dog. If people, where, where do you work? Where, where's your? Um... Currently I'm practicing out of New York. I do a lot of um, FaceTime, uh, mostly FaceTime, but I do have some office um, hours in New York and I'm going to be moving down to Savannah, Georgia, actually. And I'm looking grow my practice down there for any Southerners or anybody near Savannah that wants to come and see me. You can find me on Instagram. I do a lot of posts on there, Danielle Zanich. And I kind of um, put some fashion posts on there too, because I've been a model in the fashion industry for over 20 years. And um, I treat a lot of people in the fashion industry too for various ailments. And my practice is broad range, anything from colds, allergies, eczema to more chronic disease, autism, cancer, end of life um, difficulties. Okay. Well, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and uh, we'll definitely put your website up there. <laughs> thank you. It's been a pleasure joining you today. I love the podcast. Thank you for joining us at the Healers Cafe with Dr. Manon.